A voice that has been heard for decades, longtime TV newsman Dick Norris was a household name here in Utah. His 43 year career is a record here in the state, and only one newsman anchored longer nationwide. This week, Shauna Lake sits down person to person with Dick Norris. Dick Norris began his broadcasting career as a DJ at a radio station in Grand Junction, Colorado. After graduating from college with a degree in theater, he came to Utah and spent 43 years anchoring the news. I sat down person to person to learn more about this Utah icon. You just got back from your 55-year high school reunion. How fun. There's probably, there may be 100 of us, 150 left out of a class of almost 300, you know, and uh, we had a great time. I've been to every reunion. We used to have them every 10 years uh, since 1958. That's when I graduated. Uh, but now we're having them every five years. So uh, we get to go back and uh, renew acquaintances every five years, and we had a great class. What was your childhood like? How many brothers and sisters did you have? I had uh, a brother and a sister, all quite a bit older. My brother was 13 years older than me. And my sister was uh, 10 years old. It is 10 years old. She's still alive. My brother's passed on, but my sister lives in Midvale. I always joked that, you know, I guess I was kind of a mistake. But my mother heard that one time, and that was the end of me commenting on that. She said, no, no, don't ever say that again in my presence. Not a mistake. And I really was kind of her baby, even at uh, 55 and 60 years old before she passed away. I was still the baby. And I'm Dick Talk Morris. about uh, your illustrious career as a, as a news anchor man on the competing station. That, yeah. <laughs> a long, long, long and storied career. Uh, was that something that you set out to do? Or? Yeah, I guess I had. You know, when I, back in, I remember the end of World War II. I was five years old, but I remember every, just about every detail. But I'd listen every night with my dad to the radio. Uh, Gabriel Heater from the Mutual Broadcasting Network. And uh, he would broadcast the news at 9 or 10 o'clock. I can't remember. We'd listen. And I thought, you know, someday that would be fun to do. I'd like, but as a little kid, I had a lot of big ambitions. What was the connection, do you think, that viewers had with you? That is kind of unspoken, but you must have felt when you ran into people in the grocery store and restaurants and things. What was the thing that they, that they connected to with you? I realized early on that if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have a job. And uh, I was only as good as they are because they watched and they loved it. And I, that, that hit home and hit me hard when I had my first bout of cancer in 1980. I had been entertaining some thoughts of moving on. I'd had some offers. And I came down with cancer. And um, the people that came out of the woodwork at that time, before the internet and all the cards and the letters and the phone calls, I had three of those big trash bags full of Goodwill cards, and they all were basically the same message. We miss you on television. We love you. We hope you get better soon. And it got me thinking a lot then, you know, I don't think I would have found that in New York or L.A., and maybe I had found a home, and I had. And that cancer was lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's? 1980. And then you've had a recent bout. I did. I had a couple. In 96, I had a spot on my prostate, but it hadn't spread anywhere, and so I just had it out. And that's, uh, my wife was pregnant with our youngest son, the one who's ill now, in a wheelchair. And then this latest bout last year with the, for the throat cancer, which is clear. No sign of cancer has gone. My throat is still, as you can tell, gravelly and a bit sore at times and burns with some things I eat, but at least I'm cancer free and I'm getting back to as normal as I can at 73 years old. Do you ever miss TV news? I miss it a lot, yeah. I don't miss the hours and the deadlines and all that so much, but I miss, I miss people and uh, the people I work with. Uh, People on the street still are great. They come up, somebody will recognize me. And it's surprising how even younger generations will still say, I think I know you, I remember you. And you know, and that's nice because I'm to that point now where there are many youngsters coming up who will have no idea who I am. And I will miss that 
when I walk down the street and nobody says anything. Did it annoy you when it happened and you were working all the time? No, 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 I loved it. No, I did, I did. And I always would stop and talk. And maybe that's another connection. And that's why you are who you are and why you've had the career you've had. I guess, and I, I would do it all that way again. I really would. Oh, it's been so nice to talk to you and get to know you a little bit better person to person. Isn't that fun to hear from Dick Norris? That wonderful voice still so many years later. Person to Person, of course, airs every Sunday night right here on 2 News at 10. And the segments are sponsored by Zion Bank. You know, Lindsay, I remember when I saw Dick Norris. Of course, I grew up watching him here in yes, Utah. Yes, I think we all did. And I saw him, I remember he was wearing cowboy boots and jeans <laughs> at a Lamb Day celebration in Fairview. And I was starstruck. And he was so gracious and oh, so nice. I love stories like that. I am a like big that. fan.